now from the IBA at Winchester, engineering announcements for the radio and television trade. and welcome to this week's engineering announcements from the IBA. Advances in receiver technology. John Lovell and Pat Hawker discuss the impact of surface-mounted components. In transmitter news, the latest stations to be equipped for Channel 4. And three new relays. In Devon, Dunsford. Near Lemster, Hope under Dinmore. And in Staffordshire, Winds Hill. But first, talking with Pat Hawker, over to John Lovell. Over the last couple of years, we've read about and heard a lot about present transmission systems coming to an end and new ones starting. Uh, it seems to be progressing perhaps much slower than the pundits seem to think. Is this general or is it only particularly on the transmission side? Well, it's certainly true in the UK on the transmission side. I mean, cable satellite television, high-definition television, are all things we've talked about and seen demonstrated, but their growth is relatively slow. And, and as far as satellite goes, of course, it's still very uncertain in, in this country, direct broadcast satellite. But on the receiver side, I, I suspect that um, few of us have noticed how much things have changed in the last few years. Well, perhaps the thing that uh, immediately occurs to one is that one sees advertisements all the time for... FST, the flatter, squarer tubes, is this the only advance or are other things going on behind the scenes? Well, certainly I think the flat, square tube is quite an advance and I think it will turn out to be a, a popular improvement. But of course the, the real advance in tubes came um, oh, perhaps ten years ago almost with the development of the um, what one firm called a precision online tube rather than the delta tube. And this has meant a much less drift out of convergence. I mean, how often nowadays does one see a set badly out of convergence, whereas in the old days it was, it was all too common. What about inside the thing? Well, I think that one of the things that is going to come in fairly quickly, it's already come into quite a little a bit of some of the Japanese audio equipment, particularly the sort of walk-around cassettes and so on, that is surface-mounted devices where you're, you're getting away from the conventional printed circuit board to um, a situation where you actually stick very miniature, tiny little components on, onto much smaller boards. Um, this has got a lot of advantages for automated um, production and so on, but does have some snags, to my mind, for the, for the retailer. This, in a way, must alter the whole maintenance philosophy, almost, for the television trade. Well, certainly, when, when the surface-mounted component becomes really common, you will not be able to just take a, uh, a component off a PCB with a soldering iron. It does really need sort of special devices. Otherwise, the, the stick, the bond, will, will pull away half the board and so on. So you are getting, for the person who hasn't got the full equipment you're getting to almost to the stage of the sort of throwaway electronics so that these things can't be re easily repaired mm -hmm. and another problem with them uh, for the repairman of course is that they're so small and so tiny the components that there's no color coding or anything to identify what the component actually is although one must say that in fairness is that the service mounted device is proving to be a much more reliable and um, relatively low-cost device, so it has big advantages from the user's point of view. Well, another advantage of modern technology, reliability, as always, seems to be to the forefront. It's to the forefront, but of course, although it's much more reliable than components, it's much more costly to get them repaired. Well, Pat Hawker there talking with John Lovell. Transmitter news next, starting with special announcements. This morning on the Isle of Wight, all services from Ventnor are liable to interruption between 10 and 12 because of work by the Electricity Board. In the London area, High Wycombe is off this morning between 9 and 11.30, also because of work by the Electricity Board. 
For the same reason, in South Wales, Cumannan is off today between 8.30 and 4.30. In Scotland, Tay Bridge is off this morning until midday because of aerial maintenance. And in Gloucester and Cheltenham, the seven sound medium wave transmitter is due to be off this afternoon between 1 and 4 for an aerial and electrical inspection. In the west of England, Sir Abbas will be off tomorrow between 9.30 and 4 because of work by the electricity board. In the south, there may be a short interruption at Findon during the morning and another short interruption during the afternoon. This is while a diesel generator is temporarily connected in place of the main supply. In Scotland, the main station at Torresay will be off tomorrow afternoon between 1 and 3.30. This is because of work by the electricity board and will also affect 11 dependent relays. For the same reason, the relay at Strathallan will be off tomorrow between 9.30 and 1. And in Wiltshire, West Lavington will be off tomorrow morning between 10 and about 10.20 for aerial work. New relays next, and now on air just west of Exeter, the relay for Dunsford. The station provides reception for about 370 people in and around Dunsford, including Reedy and Swanaford. Programmes from Television South West and TVAM are on Channel 39, with Channel 4 on 49. Group E or W aerials should be used, vertically polarised. Dunsford is now on the air. Due on the air later this week, Hope under Dinmore near Lempster. The station will extend coverage to about 240 people in and around the village. Programmes from Central and TVAM will be on Channel 60, with Channel 4 on 53. Group CD aerials will be needed, vertically polarised. Hope under Dinmore is due on air in a few days' time. Also due this week in Staffordshire, a relay for the Winds Hill district of Burton-upon-Trent. The relay is designed to cover about 600 people in a small area on the north-east edge of Winds Hill. Programmes from Central and TVAM will be on Channel 56 and Channel 4 on 68. The aerial group is CD, but unusually for a relay, the polarisation is horizontal. Winds Hill is expected to be on the air towards the end of the week. Hope to be ready around the middle of the month, just north of Manchester, Middleton. Granada Television and TVAM will be on Channel 30, with Channel 4 on 48. Group W aerials will be needed, vertically polarised. In Northumberland, Fallstone. Tyne T's Television and TVAM will be on Channel 41, with Channel 4 on 47. The aerial group is B, vertically polarised. Falstone is hoped to be ready in mid-November. Channel 4 next, and in Suffolk, Woodbridge is now on the air. The channel number is 54, and the relay covers a population of 2,500. Three more relays are due this week. In Dorset, Beminster on Channel 65, Kidderminster on Channel 54, and in the Midlands, Alasey Park on 32. These relays hope to be on later this week. Due around the middle of the month, in the south, Marlborough on Channel 32, in the Midlands, Tembury Wells on 53, in the borders, Baskio Hill on 65, and in Scotland, Murkirk on 47. A reminder that three more ILR transmitters change frequency this week on VHF. Tomorrow morning, covering Maidstone and Medway, Invicta Radio from Bluebell Hill goes from 103.8 MHz to 103.1 MHz. In Canterbury, Invicta Radio moves from 95.1 to 102.8. And in the Ashford area, there's a shift from 96.3 MHz to 96.1. All these changes come into effect tomorrow. Other stations will move VHF frequencies next year. More details over the coming months. Well, that's all for this week, and we leave you with our address for technical or reception queries. Our telephone number is Winchester, area code 0962 822444. If it's cheaper, you can dial our London number, that's 584-7011, and ask for engineering information. We'll be back again next Tuesday at 9.15 and 12.15 on Channel 4 and S4C. For my colleague John Lovell and from me, Janet Smythe, goodbye until next week. <laughs>